During the 18th century, in the Mughal-occupied Lahore, a figure stood out amongst the chaos, a humble and devout Sikh by the name of Subeg Singh Jambar. Now, Bhai Subeg Singh was raised in the warm embrace of Sikhi. His veins coursed with the teachings of Guru Nanak Dev Ji, instilling in him great pyar, the foundation for a strong-rooted faith, one of unwavering resolve. Bhai Subeg Singh would always rise early in the morning and after bathing in cold water, he would meditate on God's name and read much Gurbani with the utmost love, sharda, affection and respect. His family were just as devout and infatuated with the lotus feet of the Satguru. They lived and breathed Sikhi with every fibre of their being. Originally from the village of Jambar, but currently residing in the heart of Lahore, Bhai Subeg Singh Ji not only tended to the Gurukars there, but also safeguarded the Sikh populace scattered throughout the area. Amongst them, notable names like Surat Singh, Lachiram, Koramal, and they all formed part of this tight-knit community. Bhai Subeg Singh Ji's influence reverberated throughout the city, earning him much respect even in the courts of the Mughals. His son, Sabaz Singh, was a scholar of Farsi and other languages and mirrored his father's intellect and passion, and together they held the Kal Sapant firmly in their hearts. Having taken Amrit from Buddhadal, they tirelessly worked for the betterment of the Pant. The Khalsa in return held them in high regard. The bond between Bhai Subeg Singh and the Pant was unbreakable. When the Mughals wanted to communicate with the Khalsa Singhs, it was through Bhai Subeg Singh that the dialogue flowed. And it was Bhai Subeg Singh who brought forward the regal Dastar of Nawabi to the Pant, a symbol of authority which was eventually bestowed upon Baba Kapoor Singh. After it touched the feet of five Akali Nahang Singh warriors, Nawab Kapoor Singh was the third Jatadar of Buddhadal and one of the finest Jatadars and warriors the Khalsa Panth has known. Now Bhai Subeg Singh, loyal to the Panth and with the Panth's best interest always at heart, kept a keen eye on the comings and goings on in the Mughal occupied Lahore. His physical form may have wavered and wandered, but his heart and soul remained in the Khalsa Panth's Jaran at all times, a testament to how we should all be. The Fodja of Buddhadal, in return, listened to his advice and what Subeg Singh had to say. They respected him for his pyar that he always showed to the Khalsa Panth. And the Panth did ardas for Bhai Subeg Singh that may Maharaj keep Subeg Singh in Jardikala and may always bless him and his family. Even the Mughals, those masters of manipulation, held Subeg Singh in high regard. They saw him not as a threat, but as a channel a bridge between their interests and those of the Singhs dwelling in Punjab. Many times, Subeg Singh visited Sri Akal Takht Sahib, Sri Akal Bunga and the jungles where Singhs were staying so he could talk to them, provide information, advice and as well as provide rations and funding. Everything he earned he would give to the Khalsa Panth. For the Panth he was ever present, mind, body and spirit. His loyalty was unwavering, his commitment unyielding. The Panth had Bhai Subeg Singh Ji and they knew he worked for the government but they also knew he was a Singh through and through and in his veins flowed the blood of a Singh. And Subeg Singh knew all the goings on in Lahore and he would always report everything back to the Khalsa Panth. His first love was the Panth, he was loyal to the Panth, he loved the Panth and for the Panth he was always ready and willing to do anything. And this is the way of Sikhi, the way of the Guru. The Guru and the Khalsa Panth, to a Sikh, are always the most beloved. Subeg Singh's low to the, to, to, to the Panth burned brighter than a thousand suns. It was a flame that could not be extinguished. And one day, the wretched Mughals becoming frustrated with the Khalsa Panth Singhs and their relentless defiance sought to teach them a lesson. But unable to capture any of the Akali Nihang Singh warriors at this point, instead they resorted to arresting Bhai Subeg Singh and his young son, Sabaz Singh. Being a respected Sikh and known associate of the Khalsa, they sought to teach them a lesson, a symbolic gesture meant to strike fear in the hearts of his Khalsa brethren. Nawab Zakriya Khan, a man drunk on power, after the arrest of Bhai Subeg Singh and Bhai Sabaz Singh, called them to his court. Here, he proclaimed, 
What has happened, has happened. Time has passed, and now, times have changed. Now, we will not let Sikhi remain. Subeg Singh, we will not let your Sikhi remain. And if you remain Sikh, then you shall not remain. Both you and your son should accept Islam now. Convert to Islam, he bellowed. Convert, and I will give you the whole world. The Nawab's words dripped with promises of opulence, riches beyond imagination, titles, lands, horses, money, houses, mansions, great positions in his court. Whatever you wish for is yours. The whole shebang was laid out on the table. Whatever Subeg Singh desired, it was his for the taking, as long as he renounced his sick faith. However much you need, just state it once with your tongue and we will give you more. More than you com can comprehend, more than you can imagine. But you can't be a Sikh. You need to give up your taram, your faith, your Sikhi. Things are about to change and I will not let your Sikhi flourish as it has. Choose Islam or you will be killed and you will die suffering in the most extreme pain. We will put you on the Jalkri, large wheels and turn your bones to powder, to dust. We will make you scream in great pain. You will suffer. You will die. Hearing this, the benevolent Subeg Singh spoke. So, this time has come, and such a blessed time it is. Than is this time, and blessed is this hour, where I, we, me and my son, will get to sacrifice for the Banth, for the Guru, for Sikhi. In this hour we are blessed. Than is the Jadkri that will test our faith. Blessed is this Jadkri that will preserve our Sikhi. Blessed is this Jadkri that will join us to the Guru. All mortals are destined to die. And so blessed am I and my son who will receive this such glorious deaths and unite us with our Shaheed Singh brothers and sisters and our Guru. So do it. Put us on this Jadkri and kill us. Beat us, torture us, break our bodies. Do this now. But don't take too long. Do this as soon as possible. Do not waste time. Do this, but do not dare ask if we want to become Muslim, if we want to give up our faith. We will not abandon our Guru. We will not abandon Sikhi. If our life goes, then so be it. We will give up our lives, but never our Dharam. We are the Guru Sings, and we shall die the Guru Sings. If we lose our life breaths for Sikhi, then so be it. In fact, we welcome it. Subeg Singh welcomed the Jarkri. He welcomed the torture. He held it as a test of faith, a crucible that would only strengthen their resolve. Put us on these wheels of torture, he challenged, his voice unwavering. Break our bodies, beat us, but know this, we will never abandon our Sikhi, our Guru. Turning once again to Nawab Zakriya Khan, Subeg Singh speaks, his words laced with a potent mix of defiance and contempt, saying to Zakriya, You may be learned and wise, and you think of yourself as being so clever, but tell me this, until now, how many Sikh have given up their faith? Tell me, how many have cowered under torture or given in to greed? How many have forsaken their faith because of fear? You are so clever, but yet, you try to scare us to lose our faith? Do you not understand? Even if someone does get scared and give up their faith to become Muslim, you know that they are not really Muslim, not on the inside. They are just weak. They are just faithless, weak individuals who gave up. And you know very well, a Singh has never given up his faith. And that has never happened. And today, that will not happen either. You can't trick a Sikh out of his dharam. You can't scare a Sikh out of his dharam. You can't con a Sikh out of his dharam. Please tell me, oh wise governor Zakriya Khan, if we become Muslim, will, be, will we become immortal? Will we not die? Your Islam will not save you or me or anyone from death. Even if we become Muslim, we will still die eventually losing our faith. And remember, there is no guarantee of a long life. We could fall off a horse and die tomorrow. We could become ill and die this evening. So what's the point? 
death will take us sooner or later. So it's best to die with your dharam than live on without it. Living on, having given up your dharam, is a waste. And for us, dharam, sikhi, is most beloved. We're not scared of death. Death is but a change of clothes. We will keep our sikhi, we will preserve our sikhi with every hair, with every breath. Sikhi, kesa, swasanal. In the face of tyranny and oppression, Subeg Singh stood tall, a beacon of defiance against the darkness, his spirit unyielding, his faith unshakable. Subeg Singh's voice cutting through the tense air like a knife. Even if we embrace Islam, it wouldn't grant us immortality. Death comes for us all, believe it or not. It's not worth giving up our faith for more time on this earth. It's not worth giving up our faith for anything. All the riches and bribes in the world are not worth one second in Sikhi. We will not fold, we will not break. Accepting your bribes, becoming honourless, where will we go? What honour will we have? To sell out, to give up our dharam is a fate worse than death. Most beloved is our faith. We favour death today, firm in our faith. So kill us now, don't take much time. We will not convert, we will not become Islam. We will cling to Sikhi with every fibre of our being, he declared, his resolve unyielding. No amount of riches or bribes could sway Subhik Singh from the Banth. Death is but a passing inconvenience compared to the eternal glory of Dharam. On hearing these words, Nawab Zakaria Khan became irate, overcome by anger and emotion. He ordered Subhik Singh to be put on the Jarkri straight away. Let's see this old man suffer. Let's put his faith to the test. Now the Jarkriya are two large round shaped wheels and one was multiple small sharp blades like daggers and knives of different spikes different sizes and blade types and the other wheel they would strap the things to and both the wheels had handles attached to them and in turning them the jarkriya would spin and as they would spin the jarkriya blades and spikes would cut stab into the bodies of the things tearing and ripping out chunks of flesh causing deep lacerations cuts and stabs this evil contraption was designed for the sole purpose of inflicting intense pain and delivering a slow death. It was built with one purpose in mind, to inflict as much pain as possible to the Khalsa Singhs. And in Nukka Square in Lahore, there were many, many Jarkriyas set up for this task. And they put, and they put Bhai Subhik Singh on the Jarkri and slowly began the hard, intense and bloody torture. Bhai Subhik Singh faced this torment with a serene resolve, his faith unshakable. This Jarkri is a test, a trial by fire, he declared. His voice ringing with conviction. Taneh Jarkri, this instrument of death and torture is blessed as it will test my Sikhi. With each turn, it will bring me closer to the Guru. And as the Jarkri spun, tearing at his flesh, Subhik Singh remained steadfast, his lips chanting the sacred Guru Mantra, Vaheguru. The love of the Guru never left his heart. With each and every breath, he remembered the Guru, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Guru Gobind Singh, Vaheguru. His spirit roared, a beacon of unwavering faith in the face of tyranny and despair. And know this, for the saints of God, Dukh and Sukh are the same. Pain and pleasure are equal. And in the history of Sikhi, no Sikh has ever given up their faith due to torture. No Sikh has ever cried out to God as they're being tortured and killed. None of them have cried, oh, why hast thou forsaken me or anything like that. That is not in our history. Instead, we have always, always welcomed the pain. We have welcomed death with great joy, kissing the hangman's nooses as we put them around our necks. And the toughest of pains, calling out to God, calling out to Vaheguru and saying, Tera kia mitha lage. Your doings are so sweet to me. This is the spirit of Sikhi. The Guru Sikh at the moment of his death, growing through intense pain and torture smiles, absorbed in Naam, physically drenched in blood and spiritually drenched in Naam, 
colored in God's name. The onlookers were shocked at the faith and firm resolve of Subeg Singh of a Sikh. Bhai Subeg Singh on the Charkri even lets off a Jakara, a defiant Khalsa battle cry of great bliss and happiness. Kushi on the Jakara Jagave, Fate Pave, Nehalo Jave, Satsri Akal, Gurbare Akal, Deg Deg Fate, Guru Khalsa Pant, De Harmedan Fate, Nawab Zakriya Khan. His face twisted up with rage. He could not bear the sound of this jubilation. Silence those cries! He bellowed, his voice a thunderous command. Speed up to Jarkri, let him taste the full measure of his defiance. He ordered. To increase the torture and spinning of the Jarkri did not have the desired effect. Now, in a desperate bid to break the venerable Subeg Singh, Zakriya Khan ordered the torture of Subeg Singh's own flesh and blood, his son. Bring forth his young son, he, Zakriya commanded his voice dripping with malice. Let us see if the father's resolve falters when faced with the suffering of his own child. He himself is strong, but can he stand the pain of his son being hurt and screaming out? That, that will be different. And the young Sabah Singh is strapped to the bloodstained Jarkri. Bhai Subeg Singh looks on at his son and he says to his son, Tan hai. You are blessed, and this day and this hour is blessed. Your body will be sacrificed for your faith, for Sikhi. The one whom with every hair and every breath keeps his faith, that one is truly blessed. Our Ardas is Sikhi, Kesa Swasanal Nebjave. This is all we beg for every single day. The young Sabah Singh, now upside down at the Jarkri, the torture, spinning the Jarkri, causing much damage to the young Singh's body. But following in the footsteps of his father, Sabah Singh also lets off a Jakara. Many gasps from the cram, crowds who have gathered to watch this torture for entertainment. They were now bearing eyes on what is un unveiling in front of them. And they are seeing some warriors steadfast in their faith. The defiance of the Singhs, the murmuring of the crowd who spoke to each other about this great show of bravery and defiance, this drove Zakriya Khan absolutely mad. Walking over the, the, to the Jarkri, which has now been halted, he then spoke to the young child. He spoke to the young Sabah Singh, saying to him, Listen, young Sabah Singh, he coaxed, his voice smooth as silk. Zakriya then said, you are just a child. Why waste your life away in such pain? Why squander your youth in this wretched agony? You've barely tasted the flavours of life. Flavours of life that everyone goes for and cries for. You have barely had a glimpse of the life's pleasures. I can offer you the world on a platter. You can marry the most beautiful women, feast on the finest of delicacies. Your father, he has lived his days. His time is near. His time is near its end. But you, my boy, you have an entire lifetime ahead of you. Your life is just starting. What good will your faith do when death comes knocking? What will your taram do for you when you die? We are going to kill you for your taram. For Sikhi, you are going to give up everything your whole life? Tell me, what can taram, what can Sikhi do for you? We will give you everything. Riches, lands, horses, women all that people chase in this world will be yours your taram will not give you these things turning his gaze to Subeg Singh Zakriya continued his seductive spiel saying to him you're faced with a choice Subeg Singh will you watch your own flesh and blood perish before your eyes or will you save him embrace Islam and your son's life shall be spared it's simple as that you are gonna die and it is you who's going to kill your son. Don't you love your own son? Don't you want to save his life? All he needs to do is give up his faith, give up his Sikhi. This alone will save your child's life. I don't care if you die, but I want to save your child's life. Why don't you save it for him? Tell him to embrace the Deen. If your son survives, your bloodline will remain. 
otherwise it is dead. Subeg Singh responds in a firm, unmoving, grounded tone. You are wise and you have some valid points, but our faith has made our decision for us. We will not give up our dharam. We will not give up our sikhi, our bani, our bana and our case. We have no faith in tomorrow or wealth or time. We only have faith in the Satguru. Death will come sooner or later regardless. Death comes in many forms and we can't run or hide from this. If our dharam remains, but our bodies perish, then we have struck a noble bargain. For as long as we live, we will keep our dharam. Our lives and this body, for the sake of this metaphysical world are nothing, but we will never lose our dharam, never. Our 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, sacrificed his whole family for dharam, for the panth, for us. We cannot ignore this. If our Guru never saved his sons, how am I going to save mine? How can I do any less? Guru Gobind Singh's sons, the Saibzadde, were Shaheed for the faith. And if my son is Shaheed, then it's also a blessing. Zakaria Khan was infuriated at these words. And he thought Subeg Singh is giving his son more Sikhya, more teachings, more strength and power by this speaking, giving him faith and resolve through his words. Enraged by Subeg Singh's steadfastness, Zakaria Khan plotted. Separate them, torture them, he commanded, his voice dripping with malice. Break the young boy's body, then his spirit, then dangle the bait of wealth and comfort before him. In his agony, he'll forget the Guru. In his weakness, he'll succumb to our demands. Make the pain so immense that all the child wants is for it to stop. At that point, bribe him, trick him, do whatever it takes, Zakria ordered and it was a relentless onslaught of brutality. A symphony of agony conducted by the sadistic hands of the Mughal regime. The young Sabah Singh endured a barrage of violence. They slapped, kicked and beat him with merciless fury. They dragged him through the dirt, raked his tender flesh, hung him upside down like a slaughtered animal and beat him with clubs. Each blow was a thunderous, declaration of their twisted intentions, after which they picked him up and viciously slammed him to the ground, to the unforgiving earth with the aim of breaking the boy, seeking to shatter his spirit. He was bitten, pulled around by his nose, his legs were stretched and split apart, his fingers were twisted, bent backwards and broken, inflicting torment on every inch of his young body. Sleep and sustenance were denied prolonging his torment throughout the endless night. Bound and gagged, he became a canvas for their cruelty. Pincers, knives and fists, carving a grotesque masterpiece of suffering. They shattered his teeth, smashed him in the mouth and face. They skinned parts of his body. They did everything. Even as Bhairatan Singh Ji writes this in Bhant Prakash, he states he cannot fully list all the different tortures that the young Khalsa was subject to. And in the early hours of the morning, they once again brought out the young Sabah Singh, dragging his body and again strapping into the blood-soaked Jarkri to torture him more. Those wretched evil guards and executioners conducting this bloody torture, they themselves were now exhausted, having punished him so much. They put him on the Jarkri and tortured him further. Then untying the young Sabah Singh, who was now dying, unable to speak or stand, he dropped to the ground in a heap. Due to the horrendous torture and extreme pain, the child had now passed out. He was out cold, knocking on death's door, blood leaking from his ears, nose and mouth. His body ripped apart, fingers and hands broken, laying in a pool of his own blood. The Mughal executioners then threw, threw buckets of ice-cold water on him, waking him up, jolting him back to consciousness. He was on his last moments. Death was just moments away. As this was taking place, one of the Mughal guards approached by Subeg Singh and told him, your son is about to die. He's in his last moments. Father and son were separated at this point. Subeg Singh thought about his son. 
and thinking that he is about to die soon, he smiled. He was happy. He was glad, thanking Guruji that his son Sikhi prevailed, that he had not given in. Sadhguru Raki Hamari Laj, the true Guru, has preserved the honour of his disciplines, his Sikh, his disciples. Blessed is my son. Blessed is his mother and grandparents who raised him. Blessed is his Sikhi. But meanwhile, on the other side, after dousing the dying Sabas and with icy water, he began regaining consciousness. As he was coming around to consciousness, the Mughal started cheering as Sabah Singh opened his eyes and they greeted him with congratulations and spoke to him with great love and affection, waking him up, telling him that he was in a new life and he had made the best choice. Nawab Zakriya Khan himself went over and told him that he was just converting. Be it the confusion, be it the pain, be it the disorientation, but his Sabah Singh said, yes, I am. He said yes, he would give up his faith, he would convert. He believed this. The Mughals were even more shocked now and celebrated more than before. They were so happy. Subeg Singh heard this cheering. He was then told by one of the guards, your son has agreed to convert, to give up his faith. Subeg Singh hearing this was shocked. This cut deeper than the Jadkriya ever could. He felt great anguish. How could this have happened? How could this be true? Zakriya then brought the son before his father and said, Look, he has converted, he has accepted the deen, he has given up his faith. Subeg Singh, you should do the same. In a moment of confusion and pain, Sabah Singh succumbed to their manipulations. Subeg Singh asked his son, What has happened to you? How did you give in? But the son, is this true? Did you agree to convert? Do you not understand? You are a Sikh. You are from a family of Sengs. Your mother and father, your grandparents are all Sengs. They are all Khalsa. Where did you learn this cowardice? This is not in our blood. This is not our way. The young child responds. Hardly unable to stand, hardly able to speak, hardly able to open his eyes. He said, perhaps this is my karam, my preordained destiny. Perhaps it was written like this. Bhai Subeg Singh looked at his son's forehead. Our karam are written on our foreheads, on our matha. Subeg Singh looks into his son's eyes and his son's matha, then performing a small ardas, he lifts his foot high and with his toe, tracing the contours of his son's forehead, wiping his son's forehead as he recited the Mool Mantar, followed by a Jakara Akal, Satsri Akal. Thus, taking away this preordained destiny and preordained karam. And in that moment, the weight of karam shifted, the lines of fate rewritten by an unwavering faith of a father. Sabah Singh immediately started reciting the Mool Mantar and Guru Mantar Vaheguru, Vaheguru. Bhai Ratan Singh Ji writes this, and he says, it is no hidden fact that a saint, a sant, from the house of Guru Nanak can change his own karam and the karam of those around him. This is the Shakti of a Gursik. And Zakriya calls out to Zubeg Singh, saying, what have you done? What did you do with your foot? Zubeg Singh turns to Zakriya Khan and responds, I changed his destiny. He will now die a Sikh. Just ask him. Zakriya turned to Sabah Singh and looked at him. Sabah Singh was now standing firmer and stronger than ever before, chest out, and he stated, I was born a Singh and I will die a Singh. My taram, my faith is most beloved to me. I shall give my shahidi today and join our great army of shaheeds, martyrs. The Shabad of my Guru is the most beloved to me. I shall never abandon it. Zakriya Khan became enraged and infuriated at this his rage boiling over as he commanded his executioners to unleash a great torment upon Sabah Singh and with savage brutality they obeyed, raining down blows upon this young Sikh, a ferocity born out of hatred, beating and torturing him worse than before, more viciously and more violently, the intense pain they were putting Sabah Singh through. He took, he took with a smile, as though it was nothing. He was totally at peace and calm. Now once did he scream or react to Udhai, none of that. And amidst the onslaught, Sabah Singh remained sublime, 
his spirit untouched by the violence inflicted upon his body. Zakaria Khan called forth his shamans and his witch doctors to cast spells and do Jadudunna black magic on Sabah Singh and break him. They cast their spells and curses and got tired, unable to affect the Gursik. He was protected now by the Guru Shabad. The torturers also grew tired of the torture and beatings they were handed out. They put him on the Charkri. Both father and son were put on the Charkri and made Shaheed and killed. Shred to pieces, then crushed to death. On that day, they both became Shaheed, first the son and then the father. On that day, they became immortal in the Banth of Sikhi. In that moment, they transcended mortal confines and ascended to the realm of martyrs, immortalized in the books of Sikh history till this very day and forever. The Sikh Banth Khalsa Singhs heard about this and those Nahang Singh warriors felt dukhi, saddened, sadness gripping their hearts that their beloved Singh had passed. But they were so happy that his Sikhu prevailed, that he was steadfast. Their spirits soared, knowing that their brother remained unbroken. His sacrifice a testament to the enduring power of faith in the true Guru and the Shabad. He gave his life, but not his Sikhi, for Sikhi was everything. And this was the great Sakhi of Shaheed by Subeg Singh and Shaheed by Sabah Singh, who taught us what it means to be steadfast in Sikhi, what it means to have Dharam and the importance of Dharam. And may we all be blessed in this dunya to have Sikhi, to have Dharam and to connect to the Divine Guru, the Shabad and the Khalsa. And just a bit you now, please forgive me for all the mistakes made during this Sakhi. I know I am nothing and I'm not worthy, but forgive me. Bolchuk maaf karna. Vaheguru Ji ka Khalsa. Vaheguru Ji ki Fateh. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguru Ji ka Khalsa. Vaheguru Ji ki Fateh. Vaheguru Vaheguru Ji ka Khalsa.